This is the plaintiff, David Maul. He says he was taking a walk when the defendant's vicious chihuahua came at him and attacked one of his ankles, biting it, and then the other. His ankle had a puncture wound which swelled up to the size of a golf ball. The louse gave him a fake number. He called animal control, so there was a record of it. Now he has thousands of dollars in medical bills and is suing the defendant for the $5,571.73. He's out. This is the defendant, Nils Ranikev. He says his cousin, who was visiting from Norway, was walking his rescue chihuahua when the plaintiff approached them with his dog in an aggressive way. He doesn't know if he was power walking or what, but he got tangled up in the dog's leash. He got scared and nipped at his ankles. The plaintiff went berserk, berated his poor Norwegian cousin, and now is seeking over $5,000 for a little nip from an eight-pound dog? Please. He's accused of failing to control an animal. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Mall, what happened? Yeah, I was going for a walk on the neighborhood and saw the defendants with uh, two other uh, colleagues walking two dogs. Um, and as I approached, I took a wide berth onto the, uh, the grass. Um, when did this happen? Street. This was back in October of 2019? Yes, on a Friday, after, or a Friday early evening, yes. Okay. Um, so you took a wide berth, and they're on the sidewalk, and you go where? So I go off to the right, to the right of the sidewalk. The defendant and his two colleagues are coming towards me. How many feet away from the sidewalk were you when, as you were about trying to walk three, past? About two or three feet, about midway between the sidewalk and the, and the street. Okay, so go on. What happens? Um, so I took that wide berth. Um, the defendant and the two colleagues were walking towards me. Um, the smaller dog was on a leash, um, but it was a retractable leash, and about, uh, I'd estimate, 10 to 15 feet of that leash was extended, um, and the dog came running at me. Um, grabbed onto my left ankle, bit me. Um, I tried to back up more, and the dog. What kind of dog was it? A, a small Chihuahua. I, I learned afterwards. Oi, Chihuahuas are so mean. You know, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> the only time I've been bit at the people's court was by a Chihuahua. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. So, so I backed up. It, it released my left ankle, but then came after and um, bit me on the, the back of my right ankle. So I grabbed the leash and physically pulled the dog away and had him swinging from the leash and flung him into the grass, into the, um, the yard that was to the left, um, you know, about five or seven feet just to get away. Okay, I guess it worked. And then what happened? So I was uh, quite upset with, uh, with him and uh, let him know that and asked for um, you know, his name and his phone number so I could take care of the medical bills, which I knew were coming. Um, at that point in time, he gave me the story about his, his cousin, and he didn't speak English. He was, was the cousin who was actually holding that leash. He said he was visiting from where? Somewhere in Scandinavia. I don't remember exactly where, but I remember it was somewhere in- And he was the one who was holding the leash for the dog? Yes, correct. Okay, why don't you tell me, Mr. Reneklov, what happened? So um, we had recently rescued this, uh, this, this eight pound chihuahua, Sophie. We made sure that, you know, it was all up to date on its shots. Uh, my cousin came in from Norway. He speaks perfect fluent English, by the way. And my dad came in from out of town as well. So we had a nice family get together. Um, we decided to take a walk early that Friday evening and, uh, about a hundred yards down from my house, um, the eight pound chihuahua, Sophie had to had to go do her business. So she uh, went into the neighbor's yard, did her business. The leash was retracted about 10 feet. As I'm picking up the, uh, the waste in the neighbor's yard, uh, my cousin is basically positioned in between the defendant approaching us and uh, myself picking up the, uh, the, the, the waste. And the dog, after doing her business, she starts barking and then starts charging past my cousin towards the defendant, who really made no effort to get out of the way. He, uh, he was apparently fast walking towards us, which I think was probably threatening to the dog. Now, your dog uh, ends up biting him. You don't deny that, right? Your dog bit him. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 
I, I would say the dog nipped him on the ankle. Okay. When, well, you when... ended up in the ER, right, Mr. Mall? Yes. Uh, so I called my wife. Um, well, after I called the police to take the information, I called my wife who took me to the emergency room. They treated me that night, um, you know, cleaned it up, gave me the tetanus shot, and then advised me to go see my primary care physician. Did you know whether this dog had had its shots or you just did? Because typically, no. if you ask and you get proof, then you don't even have to have that shot, I don't I, think. I but anyway. Him. I yeah. No, I, but I don't, I don't no, nobody's going to listen to the dog owner whose dog just nipped them say, ah, don't worry, my dog has their shot. You would have to pony up the papers. Uh, I don't know that so we yes. got that far. Which I did. When did you show the papers? Uh, when the police arrived. Yeah. And when was that in relation to the bite? About, about an hour later. Oh, that's pretty soon. All right. So you end up going to the emergency room. You rack up a bill of medical costs of about 2000 something dollars and the rest of your lawsuit is for pain, suffering and anxiety. How long are you in the mer in the emergency room over these wounds? Probably about an hour and a half. Okay. Do you have I, I see that you submitted pictures of the wounds. First of all, let's go through these pictures. This is a picture actually of the defendant, right? So you took pictures of the the folks who were walking the dog. And why did you take pictures of them? Um, so uh, yeah, at, that, at the time of the incident, um, you know, I asked for a name and phone number. Um, the first phone number he gave me was a false phone number, so I knew I needed some evidence. How do you know who was there? Because I, I tried. How to did call you know that the, the first? Time. And so I had my I had my cell phone with me. You tried to number. call it at the time, and what? And as it was dialing, um, he said, "Oh no, no, that's the wrong number." Okay. And All right, so you took a right. picture I, I to make sure you'd be able to identify. What number did you give? I did, did not give? give the wrong phone number. He, he typed in the wrong phone number. I, okay. All right, either way, wait number. a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Just stop talking. Is this the bite we're talking about, Mr. Mall? Yeah, that's, that's the, the second bite. That's when I actually pulled the dog off my leg. That's why it's scraped like that. But yes, that's the second bite. That is not what it looked like. The, that is at the site. <laughs> um, that, 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 is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Stop yes. talking. Is this it? Are these your wounds? Yes, I'm looking at your wounds. This one? Yes. And the other one. That's it. That's what we're talking about. Correct. And that turns into a $5,000 lawsuit? Roughly 2700 Half of that is about what the doctors charge. That's medical uh, costs in this country. <laughs> one thing to point out first was, you know, a couple of months later, he texted me that the uh, that the doctor bills were twenty seven hundred dollars. You know, I, I assume that that was either a joke or he was just trying to intimidate, you know, to try and draw some money out of me. Did you ask him to send you the medical bills, the hospital bills? Because, you know, hospital bills do. I get did not. I, I, All right. I, I didn't think there would, would have been any need. My, my own, yeah, well, that's how you substantiate. If it, there's none so blind as he who will not see. Um, now, my understanding, Douglas, is that we actually have a witness all the way from Norway. That is absolutely correct, Your Honor. One of the few fine things about COVID is I can get myself a, Nor a, a, Nor a, a witness all the way from another country at the Here. snap of my fingers. All right. What is your name, sir? Shell Berongleiv. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call you sir. Uh, can you can you can you swear the witness in Douglas, please? Uh, absolutely, Your Honor. Can I get you please to raise your right hand? You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, I do. All right, sir. All right. So you were here on a trip, and why don't you tell me what happens with the dog? Okay, uh, we we went from his house about 10 minutes after I arrived because the dog needed to go out. Uh, and I was taking the, the small dog. And uh, as uh, Nils stated, it had to do her business. So I released the leech about two or three meters. She, she did uh, her business and uh, Nils went up to clean it up. And as I hold the, the tight, uh, uh, tight uh, leech, uh, she had a bark or, or two, uh, and then uh, then uh, run uh, towards the uh, plaintiff, and then uh, the dog went uh, around him from where I was standing, uh, and ended up on his right side, and and uh, did uh, two or three nips before he was uh, okay. uh, thrown away. I got it. 
I'm showing you this picture, and um, is that the way his injury looked that day after the nip? No, it, w it was white, a surface scratch. All right, so maybe it took a... If, I think we're getting hung up on this. Um, okay, all right, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, sir, and um, you can stay or you can go. I don't know how this... We, we, with the, through the marvel of technology, you can stay or you can go, but I'm moving on with my two litigants. Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The plaintiff says his injury swelled up to the size of a golf ball, so he went to his doctor immediately. But the defendant says the guy's making a mountain out of a molehill and owes him nothing for his tiny little scratch. Let's go back into the courtroom. Mr. Mall, a couple things, okay? You are suing for the entire bill which was paid by insurance, not for your deductible, because in your words, why should he benefit from my insurance? You understand that the law would never allow you to have double recovery, that that would be insurance fraud. Uh, if in yeah, fact a court how. of law gives you the full amount, you must send it to the insurance company or it's insurance fraud. You can't get paid twice. So okay. I just want to yeah, say I that I wanted to all. point that out because the issue came up. So I got to be honest with you. Um, and here's where the problem lies, okay? I look at your injuries and my first reaction is, oh, what a baby. Because they just don't look that bad. And that's what you're thinking, right? But here's where the problem lies whenever there's a dog is you're worried about rabies. You're worried about, and I realize that pretty soon you brought up the paperwork, but I don't want to, I'm going to go and get my tetanus shot if I'm not up to date on my tetanus shot. And they will never know if you're up to date, so they'll just give you the tetanus shot. Now, you have two defenses. One is, oh, this is just ridiculous. And your other is, hey, he's power walking at me, he's being aggressive. I need you to understand that you're in the fine state of Florida, where I am also from. And Florida is one of the states that has a strict liability law, which means that the presumption is always, unless he's like poking a stick at your chihuahua, the pres he's doing what he has a right to do. Power walking, he has a right to do. The presumption is always that you will have to pay the bill of whatever happens, the reasonable bills, okay? I cannot stress enough how important it is for everyone within the sound of my voice to go on the internet right now if they have a dog and walk their dog, or their dog has any contact with anybody, to go on the internet right now and figure out if they are in a strict liability state. Because maybe it makes a difference on whether you do this, which I always see dog owners do, less paranoid dog owners, dog owners who aren't like me, who don't spend all day doing dog cases, okay? I never have my dog anywhere near another person. If another person is walking up, I start to take my dog and pull them in a different direction. I just do, and when they say, can I pet your dog? I'm like, oh, she's so skittish, you know? I just, and I know that it, it's a part of a dog's so, socialization, but then, yeah, then you might end up having to pay consequences, okay? Um, so really, the issue becomes, did he overreact by going to an ER when a strange dog that's not his dog bites him? You know, he made a comment earlier that was very on point. He said, hey, this is the ridiculous cost of medical care in the U.S. I mean, it's, he's sort of right about that. So there are some things that I do have to question you about, like $2,700 in pain and suffering, because that I do have to look at how much you got, how much pain you were in and how much you suffered. And that's when I look at a scratch and a teeny little wound. Prove it. Well, Prove to so, me $2,700 something dollars in pain and suffering. So I walk every, every uh, day now. When I see another dog, it's always in the back of my mind that this dog is going to come at me and attack me. Yeah, it should be. Um, Frankly, yeah. it should be in the back of everybody's mind whenever they walk by an animal, that the animal is an animal. That should be in the back of everybody's mind. Show me $2,700 in pain and suffering. Go ahead. Anything yeah, else? So it's, it's, it's more the anxiety and just knowing that uh, this can happen again. Okay. So I'm looking at the text from that night. And um, it says, from you, sir, again, these are the texts that you provided. From the defendant, it says, sir, again, I apologize for the incident with the dog. Let me know if there's anything I can do. And then you respond four days later and say, when I receive the ER and doctor's bills, I will let you know the amount so you can reimburse those expenses. And then you also say, as you are aware by now, I elected not to pursue the case through animal control. Please don't make me regret that decision and keep your animal under control so it doesn't happen again. 
I wouldn't say it's the friendliest text exchange. Then you say on January 19th, I've received all the doctor and ER bills when your dog bit me. The total is 2,697. Let me know how you would like to pay. And then I guess that he goes. So you don't have any more communication and then you file the lawsuit. All right. Correct. Uh, as I go over all these bills, uh, what I am reducing it is the actual bill from the hospital and the actual bill from the doctors and the amount of the CBS costs. And that ends up being $2,799. I want to repeat what I am saying to you right now. The only thing that you get to keep from that is the amount that you're out of pocket. Anything else is going to the insurance company. Do you understand that? Because otherwise it's insurance fraud. Okay, good luck, gentlemen. And please try to keep your dog away from other people who have a right to power walk as aggressively as they want. In fact, they have a right to run. Retractable leashes are a terrible idea because as your cousin was testifying, oh, you can let go, but then you gotta like, you know, you don't have time to react. They're a horrible idea. I don't recommend them. I suggest, especially if you have a dog who's protective and a nipper, I do not recommend retractable leashes. Good luck to both of you. So the judge finds for the plaintiff $2,700. How about that? The defendant is still with us, Mr. Ronikev. Let me ask you a quick question. I'm sure you were shocked when you when you initially saw the doctor's bill, right? Uh, yes, I was. I was very shocked with that. How do you feel now that you, that the judge has determined you you have to give him twenty seven hundred dollars? Well, w one thing I'd like to point out is is that he uh, the condition of his leg, as as minimal as it looked in the pictures, w wasn't even to that extent at the scene. So I looked like he doctored some some stuff up to make it look worse <laughs> for the photo um listen your your witness right. is still on the line with us from from norway let me ask you about this, a similar incident like this if it happened in norway what would you do there do you have a court like this a small claims court in norway uh for for small incidents we have another kind of instance that uh, uh that uh, is not the court because it's uh shuffles away the the small cases and it would probably end up with something like that. Well, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm sure you're learning a little bit about the court system here in the United States. Listen, thank you very much for uh, for participating. Let me ask you, Mr. Mall, you're going to get $2,700 now. Uh, you don't get to keep all of that, as the judge pointed out, correct? You understand that? I do understand that. Let me ask you, how has this affected you mentally? I mean, are you now afraid of dogs when you see them anywhere? I, I wouldn't say afraid, but again, certainly this incident's uh, always in the back of my mind as I walk in the neighborhood and see other dogs coming the other direction. So I suppose you're going to be extra careful whenever you see a dog and you're walking, right? Maybe even turn around and go the other way. How about that? Yeah, I certainly uh, will do everything I can to not let this happen again. Well, it might be the smartest thing of all. Well, congratulations. You prevailed in this case. Very interesting case indeed. Let's now join the judges for another session of After the Verdict. Marilyn, you mentioned that Florida is a strict liability state when it comes to dog bites. Most states are now. The yeah. original rule way back in the, in the old days was you got one free bite. Right. To, because if you got bit by a dog, you had to prove that the owner knew it was some kind of dangerous, vicious dog. Right. So but the owner most, had to know that the dog yeah. had bitten before. Wisely, That's the one virtually thing. most yeah. of the states have, got, have done away with that. And it's strict liability. Unless, you're, unless you can show somebody's poking or prodding or tormenting your dog, you better be ready to take out your checkbook if the dog bites somebody, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And another thing that you noted in this case that I thought was interesting was that the defendant was using a retractable leash, which is about as useless or about as useful as a, as a glass hammer. They don't, they, don't, <laughs> they don't do any good at all. No, it's like a fence with a hole in it. Yeah. It just doesn't really uh, I, protect. I, they, they, you know, it, that is not in control of your dog, in my opinion, if you... Right. If you, you know, if the dog gets 10 more feet, right. I, I, I thought the witness from Norway was r really well spoken. And, um, but, you know, it was his testimony, too, where he said, well, the dog was 10 feet away from me. That's not really in control of your dog. Right. 
But, uh, but you know, er everything else he was talking about, I thought he made a lot of sense that, oh, you got to be kidding me. This, go this swells into this kind of a case. Why wasn't he patient and waited for the rabies thing? Well, what would you do if you were in a hospital? and a dog had yeah. bitten you, how many hours are you going to wait and hope I'd animal control worried. conveys the information? And, and I agree with you. The puncture wound looked way worse than the scratch. It was starting to swell up, and it, it could have been deep. You don't really know. So I guess you just get the shot. But, uh, you know, I almost feel like I need to apologize to all the pit bulls out there because this was just a little chihuahua. And, yeah, <laughs> you know, any dog can bite. It's not always the big dogs uh, that do it. And this is uh, certainly not a typical Viking dog. No, nope. uh, nope, it's not. <laughs> Uh, you know, a cute little guy anyway. Have you ever had a case where you had somebody testify um, over Zoom or, or FaceTime or Skype or whatever mechanism in uh, your cases here in Dade County? I have, actually, and uh, I had a case from Norway. I had a, a guy who was a sailor in the Caribbean who accidentally shot a flare into his leg that shot into his calf while he was out on his sailboat, and it burned out in his calf. And... He ended up in the hospital in Miami. He was airlifted there. They were lucky to save his leg. But yeah, what I remember that case because they were they worked through you know like twelve hours. They saved right. his leg. Right. Then he uh, he and his son, who I think was a doctor, flew him. Tell us about that. Well, uh, interestingly, he was sailing in the Caribbean. He shot the flare. He was alone on a, on a big sailboat. He shot the flare off. It went into his leg. They took him to a hospital in a small Caribbean nation where they were basically trying to decide whether to cut his leg off at the knee or closer to the hip. And he got on the phone and called for a helicopter that flew him to Miami. And in Miami, a trauma surgeon saved his leg and saved his life and then later got sued for medical malpractice. But right. uh, that's what the lawsuit was about. I, so he got back to, to Norway, and then he ended up filing a medical malpractice suit. Exactly. Against, because it, it got Miami infected in Norway, Norway. And it got reinfected. And, no good know. deed goes unpunished. Perhaps. <laughs> so Darius from New York wants to know, Harvey, do you remember your first day working on the People's Court? Yes, I do. Um, it was really exciting. It was one of the first shows that I ever worked on. I was 27, 28 years old. And I remember thinking, God, is this thing going to work or not? It was fun to do. And I, what I really remember is after the first and second shows aired on television, that people were really receiving it well. It was a big hit, thanks to Judge Wapner. That will do it for this case. Litigants are inside the courtroom for the next one.